If you got your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 30. Very familiar scripture. Deuteronomy is the book that Jesus quoted from more than any other book of the Bible, of the Torah. I want to deal with that. I'm going to reveal a few things personally about myself. And people ask me a lot of time uh, about financial information. And I've learned, I very seldom, Kathy knows, I, I, I usually don't like to give that because of... Um, they do something that I, I told them to do and it doesn't work out, they get mad at you about it. You know? And uh, you gotta understand something about the stock market, everybody selling stock believe it's going down and everybody buying it believe it's going up. So it's a faith and fear situation in a sense. But I wanna talk today about a subject I believe it'll bless you and minister to you. Uh, did you enjoy it last night? Yes. Normally I wouldn't have been that funny, the Lord took me down that funny route. And some of y'all flat needed to laugh and be healed afterwards. Some of y'all just holding your side like it's hurting, praise God. <laughs> I love the Torah, like they say, and Moses is talking here in chapter 30, verse 19. And the title of the message is, his life is about choices. You had a choice to come this morning. You had a choice not to come. You had a choice to come to the Southwest Believers Convention. You still have a choice, some of you that are not here yet because tomorrow is July the 4th, and then, you know, most people have a long weekend. I call my office, and, and my office is closed tomorrow completely, and uh, also they, they're looking forward to that and things of that nature. And I find a lot of times that, you know, God will always do what he says, but sometimes our choice is different <clears throat> than what he tells us to do. And you can mess up obedience so easily with just with three letters, this. If you diss it, it becomes disobedience. So he's telling the people here in, in verse 19 of uh, Deuteronomy chapter 30, he says, I call heaven and earth record this day against you. So he wants this wrote down. That I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Then God tells you what to choose, but it's up to you whether you choose it or not. Therefore choose life. Now watch this, I love this part. And I want the Democrats to hear this. I don't get a little political this morning. Now, I'm, not, I'm not against, I was, I was raised in a democratic state. I'm from the state of Louisiana. You know, so I'm not against Democrats or Republicans or whatever, independents, not the issue. But I don't like it when a party says something against the will of God. Now, I don't care how smart you are. God's a lot smarter than any of us. And he says this, that both thou and thy seed may live. There's a thing going around with a lot of rich, rich people that you should not leave anything for your children. They ought to just work for it. I, well, I agree with that 100% in this manner. Yes, they should work, but you would be disobedient not to be a blessing to your children. Because the Bible said a good man leave an inheritance for his children's children. So God is dealing with three different generations here. You, your child, and your child's child. But that's a big thing going on. Like right now, a lot of people don't want no, uh, a lot of uh, people don't want people to know that they uh, have money. Why are you so afraid of money when you live in an economic world? Now, you shouldn't fall in love with money because all money is is a tool. Money in its, tr in its true sense is valueless. If you can't eat it because it'll kill you, you start just biting $100 bills. <clears throat> Somebody got 100 bucks this morning on Hulu. But if you just start chewing it up, it'll choke you. It's valueless until it becomes a seed. Right. If you wrapped yourself with $100 bills today, and walked out and a thunderstorm hit you in Fort Worth, you're going to be naked in three minutes. <laughs> because money's a Judas. It will leave you. But if you take that money and go to a store and buy some clothes, make it a seed, sow it into Neiman Marcus, or like Kathy says, needless markup, you know, whatever. <laughs> you know, okay. It becomes warmth for your body. If you take that seed, that money, and make it a seed and go eat lunch after a while, it'll bring nourishment and nutrition to your body. But it's valueless until it becomes a seed. And everything is done in seed form. That's how you got here. Everybody in this building, your mom and dad has sold some seed. Whether you believe it or not, there's no immaculate conceptions in the place. 
And, that's, and you became because of that. So that's why they say that. And I, I don't like that, so I stand up that. They say, oh, then you, you, you must not like the Democrat. No, you said that. I didn't say that. Don't, 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 don't say what you think I said. T say what I said. I said, but I don't like that when they said you shouldn't leave nothing to your children. That's wrong. But you should teach them the work. Like I give Jody everything I, I possibly can. I give my, my granddaughter everything. But I teach her to work. We teach her to do things. We, she, she went the other day, and, and, you know, because she's growing real fast. She's growing in them little spurts, you know. And, uh, and so I don't know how many pairs of shoes this kid's got, because Kathy buys a pair of shoes every other day from somewhere. It just comes in all the time. They're buying the little pretty things. So we brought it to a Jody brought it to a place and said, now look, we're going to take these shoes. We're going to give it to these people, because there's some children who can't afford shoes. And she never, she goes, really? But we're going to pray over it. They're going to wear your shoes. You better th thank God that the Lord has blessed you with shoes. So we teach them those things. And, but you don't teach them by not giving them a pair of shoes. Just work for them shoes. Or go barefoot. No. You, you get them a pair of shoes and teach them what it takes to buy that pair of shoes and, and work to receive that. That's what I'm talking about. Now, this is scripture that thou and thou seed may live. Now, some people are not, they're not just so, they say, well, we're just not into the, old, into the Old Testament. Well, go with me to 2 Timothy real quick. I'm going to come back to this. Hold your place there and do it around. Go with me to 2 Timothy. It's right past 1 Timothy. Right, that'll help you. <laughs> 2 Timothy chapter 3. Look what it says here in verse 16. It says, all scripture. Now, put your finger there and go back to Deuteronomy. Is that scripture what we just read? Yes. <clears throat> is it holy scripture? Yes. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. So it's inspirational to God to bless your seed. Watch this. <clears throat> it's given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. For reproof, for correction, this is 2 Timothy 3, uh, 16, for instruction in righteousness. So the word of God is given for instruction in right standing that the man of God may be perfect, that means matured, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. How many of you right now, you have a room in your house that's not furnished? And you believe in God for some furniture stuff. Okay, that means your house is not thoroughly furnished. Not that it's bad, it's just not thoroughly furnished. So now go back to Deuteronomy. So see, this still stands. A lot of things God said in the old covenant still stands today because it's profitable for doctrine, for doctrine and reproof and correction. So let me start again. I call heaven and earth record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, <clears throat> choose life. <clears throat> I'm getting like Jerry Seville here. <clears throat> I have to give him a hard time. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. It didn't say survive. It didn't say exist. It said live. Live, and you should live happy. And you should have whatever you need, desire, and want according to the Word of God, not according to the church, but according to the Word of God. He supply all you need. Delight yourself, therefore, in the Lord, you get the desires. If you pray like the psalmist David, you get your wants. So it's needs, desires, and wants. Church don't believe that, but that's what he said. See, and they need to start believing that. He said that thou mayest love the Lord thy God. In other words, when God does that for you, you mean God, you're going to bless me, my seed, and my seed, seed? Now that's love, thinking ahead for you. That thou mayest love the Lord thy God, that thou mayest obey his voice. So don't tell me you can't hear his voice if he says you have to obey it. I mean, if he wouldn't be talking and then he would demand that you obey his voice, you would have to say, excuse me, I, I have a case here. That thou mayest obey his voice. Notice that. That thou mayest cleave unto him. That just doesn't mean Sunday morning, Sunday night, and a possible Wednesday night service. If you have that in the Protestant ranks, or just one service, or whatever. Cleave to him. Hold him. Get close to him. Stay with him. You understand what I'm saying? That thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life. Now, a definition of life can be many, many things. And the length of thy days. So as the closer you get to God, the length of your days gets better. You don't look as old as you are. Think about that for a minute. Of course, today we got things that they can fix things up. They fix the face, but the rest of the body just goes south. I had a woman say, you like my facelift? I said, they should have done something with that neck. Go a little lower that neck. 
I'll never forget, I got to tell you something Kathy did when I just thought it was so funny. She woke up, she had been sleeping hard, man. And I mean, she just, she just woke up and, I, and she was in a bundle like a, just like that. And you know, so her bodies all smashed together. And she gets up and she goes, and she goes, to, it, it went to the restroom. She comes back and had a big, huge, huge mirror in her back. She goes, oh my God. And I went, oh, something, I, mean, my, her, I mean, it was like an emergency. Man, it, it woke me up. I, went, I said, what's the matter? She says, Jesse, I got, uh, uh, what they call it? The claw, the, uh, the what? She said, I got a V. I said, you got a V? And, you know, she had been so much like this that there was a line on her chest. She said, look at this, it's the V. I said, the V. I said, well, take it all off. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me look at this. I felt it, it was an opportunity. <laughs> look at it, shut up. I'm gonna shut up right there, that's all I'm going. The V, whatever the V means, I have no idea. Let me start verse 20 again here, glory to God. <laughs> that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, that thou mayest obey his voice, that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life and the length of thy days. Watch this. That thou mayest dwell, means live, habitate, in the land which the Lord swore unto thy fathers. Now, are we of the seed of Abraham? Yes, so think, oh, everything over there is for us too. And I read it this way, that thou swear to thy father, to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Jesus, and Jesse. And then put your name in there because you're the seed of Abraham. This passage is dealing about choices. What are you willing to choose? Write this down. A choice always turns a debate into a decision. Once a choice is made, the next move should be action and reaction. Once you make your mind up or you make a choice, whether it's good or bad, then the next thing that's going to come is action to that choice or reaction to that choice. Now, it's amazing to me how many people are searching for life. Oh, was it Brother Colton said that you're trying to find yourself or was it my brother the dollar? I'm not sure. Write this down. Why search for life when it's one decision away? Write that down. Your life is one decision away. Choose you this day whom you're going to serve. That's what Joshua said. I mean, you, your life is just one decision away. A diet is one decision away. Everything is one decision away. Now, a decision will determine something. It, 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 it will cause fortitude in your life because once you make a decision, you are not putting a limit on yourself. You're saying this, that no matter what happens, this is what I'm going to do. I made up my mind when I got born again. Now, I'm going to say this. I was talking to Brother Happy and Sister Jeannie. I really struggle with sin. I have a hard time sinning. <laughs> See, you almost misinterpreted that. I really, I mean, it should be very hard for you as a believer to sin because you are born again. You got life, the hope of glory inside of you. So when sin comes your way, you ought to go, man, you, you have to actually just bend yourself to do something that's displeasing to God. And the only way it happens is through a choice. I choose not to sin. Now, I have sinned. We've all have sinned to come short of the glory of God. But there's been times I knew not to do something. And I said, well, Lord, the temptation was overbearing. He said, no. No, he said, your choice was. See, life's about choices. When I married Kathy, I said, this is it. I mean, is she going to take me in or I'm going to take her in if Jesus tarries? This is it. We've been married 44 years. I can't believe 44 years have gone by. It seems like about 10 years. Now, in my eyes, she looks the same. Now, you know, I mean, we're, I don't really worry. Age does not bother me in the least. I'm glad. I, I like it, glory. Every day above ground is a good day. That's how I think about it. Glory to God, I got another day to live. Hallelujah, glory to God. See, I decided to live every day. When's the last time you saw me sad? Sick, depressed, despondent, discouraged, broke. And never will. Why? Because I choose not to be. I can be that, but I choose not to be. I'm doing a major inspection on an aircraft right now, and I got a really rough uh, call. Uh, call. Uh, I'm changing the gear. You got to land on the gear, so you got to make sure the gear is right. And they said, well, it's going to be $72,000, almost $72,000. I 
just for the gift, just for the front gear. They ain't counting the back wheels. I said, okay. Now, there's only one company, and I'm saying this on live television, glory to God. But anyway, on one company that does this in the United States. They got another company to open up in two months in Canada. So there's no competition. So they just sent us a letter saying, we're going to charge you $148,000. You don't like it, but take the gear off. <laughs> but then you can't fly. Now, that, that angers me. Now, I can make a choice. I can call some people in New York that I know real well. <laughs> and send them down to Florida with some of their associates. And they're going to say, you're going to do what? What? You're going to do what? I ain't lying. I thought about it. <laughs> Just because they want to. Because they have the power to. But I prayed about it. I said, Lord. He said, don't ask me what to do. You tell me what you're going to do. Amen. I said, I'm going to pray for them. And then I'm going to pray for myself. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? I made a choice. Why search for life when it's one decision away? I said all that to say this. Write this down. God will not force you to do right. He will not force you to do right. He urges, he persuades, and he entreats. He don't force you. God respects human will better than anyone you've ever seen or ever will meet in life. He'll protect your right to go to heaven. He'll protect your right to go to hell. He don't want you going to hell. One man said, I don't believe in hell. I said, that don't change it because you don't believe in it. I don't believe in paying taxes, but I do. And most people pay taxes because they have to. Think about it. The government will send you a letter. If you want to send it in, it's okay. And if you don't want to, it's all right. The United States would be broke. Why? Because you work for that money. And you feel you deserve it. And you do. But you're also riding on roads that need to be fixed. See? So God will not force you to do right. He didn't force me to do right with that decision I had to make. So I, I called my financial director and said, cut him a check. Did I want to do that? No, I didn't want to do that. But I did have a choice. He, he urged me to walk the life plan. He persuaded me, he entreated me. You see, without God, life is a shadow, a blank, a void. Acts chapter 17, verse 28 says, in him we live and move and have our being. So without God, life is a shadow. Before I knew the Lord Jesus, I, I was not a person, I was a shadow. You know what I'm saying? It, I, I, you know, whatever came my way, and I used to hear people say, well, whatever comes your way. You know, they said, you know, bad things happen to people. Bad, bad things happen to good people. No, no, I, I, I actually reversed that in my thinking. Good people happen to bad things. Because sometimes we live in a bad world, but we got to make a, a choice whether to accept that or not accept that. Just that simple. It's really, you're just one choice away. That's why I believe I told Jody, my daughter, she's my only heir, my, grand, my granddaughter Meredith is my only heir. Of course, my son-in-law too, but I'm just saying, and I just say, you know, hey, I'm not working for me no more. So when I hear people, I name names, Warren Buffett and all the people, and that's, they can do what they want, that's a choice. Well, I'm not going to leave my kids anything. Well, I'm going to leave them a billion. You know, I mean, you got 48, but I mean, there's nothing wrong with taking care, you know, just being a blessing to the world. I'm not talking about that. But I think you should honor God in his word before you leave this planet. That's why I'm working for them. I'm really not working for me and Kathy at all. We quit working for you that long time ago. I mean, that privately, it's just simply the truth. I made choices. And the Lord began to say, I'm going to bring you into areas where you can make a choice. And if you listen to my voice, I will bless you. He said, because Jesse, the wealth of the sinner is not in the church. It's outside the church. Amen. Write that down for God's sake. See, everybody's looking for wealth in the church. No, it's not in the church. It's outside the church. It should be in the church, but it's outside. But you're going to have to hear that voice and obey it. So let me say this again. God interferes not nor trifles with the power of free will. If I want to go get drunk this afternoon, I can. I mean, I'm not, but I can. I refuse to. I make a choice not to. I mean, I've never tasted booze I didn't like. I first got drunk when I was five, almost six years old, fell off the back of a boat like the ground, drunk as a skunk. 
Me, because my uncles left cans of beer hanging around. You know, a kid will drink something. I had a buzz on. I, I was singing off the back of a boat. <laughs> Mama beat me sober. And then it got a war in that house against my uncles for leaving them cans of beer around. Now, this is before any of us saved and all that kind of stuff. But a child don't know. Had no con I had no concept. I just thought, thirsty, drink it. I go. But all of a sudden I went, I like this. Don't take much for a kid to get drunk. You see, they were not being responsible. They made a choice to be not, not, not to be responsible with children hanging around. But you know what? You have a free will to do that. So life's about choices. Now I want to get into something here. Write this down. You as an individual are alone before God. You as an individual are alone before God. You decide for yourself the question upon which eternal life or death depends. Now, if you really want to strengthen it out of the mouth of two witnesses, let that word be established. Every word be established. Let me say it again. You, as an individual, are alone before God. That's it. It's you and him. You decide for yourself the question upon which eternal life or death depends. I'm always getting questions, you know, because I have a question and answer period on my program. If you've seen it, it's called uh, Ask Jesse. And I get some pretty good questions that really gets my mind to thinking. Well, what do you think about cremation? Do you think it's a sin? You know, because the Jews don't cremate. Well, you got to understand back in those days that only the heathens would burn their dead. The Jews buried their dead. Now, you may disagree with what I'm going to say. You have that right. But I'm going to say it because I have that right. You want to get cremated, it's your business. Because, you know, God started with dust. <laughs> so he can start with dust again. <laughs> because I've been, to, I've been to Hawaii, I don't know how many times, and I know that those bodies in the Arizona are completely dissolved. After being salt water for over that, all them years, how many men that were buried at sea that there's nothing left? But when God going to call, bonehead, bonehead, bone, uh, something going to happen. You see, so I'm not concerned how God can fix a body. So I leave that decision with you. You want to be buried? Fine. You want to be buried? If you want to be, that's your business. Now, some people disagree with that. You have that right. But I have a right to say that. So, well, brother Jesse, what are you going to do? Well, I, I, I hadn't thought about dying yet. Don't push the, don't push the maybe, baby. I don't think about that. Have I prepared for it? Man, I got a nice place. Brother Green, I got a, I got a nice place I'm going to be buried. Kathy don't like it. She said, sell it. I said, okay, we'll sell it. It's called a couch. That's what it's called, a couch. You can bury 12 people in there. My pastor here, uh, Nate's with us. He said, he asked me one time, I thought it was so nice. He said, but does you have a tomb and stuff like that? I said, yeah. He said, because I'd like to be buried with you. You know, Jesus Terry. I said, well, that means now you can. But God said, I ain't doing that. I'm going to build you a structure. And I thought, what you going to do? Stand out there and sell my CDs after I'm gone? <laughs> if Jesus Terry. I said, I don't know. Well, if that's what, fine. I don't, you know, I don't care. Whatever. We have a man in New Orleans that loved Christmas so much that every Christmas they go to his tomb and they put Christmas lights on it and a Christmas tree and they play Christmas music. That's okay with me. Kind of nice in a graveyard. <laughs> Christmas tree, Christmas lights. It's in Metairie, Louisiana. You know, you know what I'm talking about? There. There. Because you got to understand about New Orleans, they're in the dead, boy. We got some tombs, son. We are in the tomb. One of the greatest uh, things for people to see are our tombs. We're all buried above ground. There's one tomb I could take you right now. It cost $3 million in 1852. Wow. There's no more marble like that in the world. You ought to see that. This thing is amazing. In fact, when John and Diana Hager came, he said, Jesse, take us to the grave. I said, the grave? He said, to the grave. I've heard about this. Thing. The architecture is phenomenal. You see people walking around and say, boy, that old boy buried well. Wouldn't look at this. <laughs> I brought Jerry Savannah. <laughs> There's one that's been used with a big elk. He said, that's the grand potentate. That's what Jerry said, grand potentate, whatever, something like that. I don't know what it was. I said, I guess so. I mean, the people into that. And of course, that costs a lot of money to do that kind of stuff. And, and, then you, and, and it's amazing to watch it. But if that's what they want to do, that's fine. To me, that's almost like a waste. But hey, 
Kathy says, I ain't burn. If you die before me, I ain't burning you. I want to go to a place where I can uh, you know, just remember you. I said, well, you don't have to go nowhere to remember me. <laughs> Unless you think about man, somebody else. <laughs> and if that happens, I'm taking all that money with me in that coffin. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Let that sucker do his own business. <laughs> She told me, shut up, and I did. <laughs> God interferes not nor trifles with the power of free choice. I've set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Now, let me give you an example here. God put me in a situation with two men that would affect my life as a young man in terms of investment in certain things. Raised very poor. Was not embarrassed that, still not embarrassed about it. Mom and dad did the best they could. I'm trailer trash. Raised up in trailers, moving all the time. Couldn't afford anything else but a trailer as far as my mom and dad was concerned. Okay, now watch this. When uh, be, being the city of New Orleans, it's a very cultural city, and the food is phenomenal and all that kind of stuff. People come down there. It's called the Big Easy partying. Well, I met a man named Mr. Sutton. Me and Kathy did. Now, we would walk down Canal Street and New Orleans is like walking into, a, into another century. You go down, uh, you know, St. Charles Street, every house is a mansion. It's called block mansions. The only city left in the city in the, in the United States of America that still has block mansions. It, that, that used to be like that in New York, but they tore them down because the real estate got so expensive, they put skyscrapers. You had the Vanderbilts, you had the Rockefellers, and you know, all that, all that kind of stuff way back then. Fifth Avenue, I mean, beautiful homes. They moved out further on the Hudson, I believe that it was. Now watch this. So it's very cultural. We were walking around, and I met, and he's passed away, this man, a Jewish man, very nice man. He looked at me, we were looking, he says, let me show you some pretty things. Now, i never seen nothing pretty in my life, you know. I always ate in the kitchen. My mother's curtains were plastic. Anybody ever had plastic curtains? Hold your hand if you had plastic curtains. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bunch of pool people. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we didn't have no cloth. There's a plastic curtains. You understand? How many of y'all would get a couch you never could sit on it because they covered it with plastic? Boy, you just rear end would just stick to the thing. They're, they're terrible. But they, they didn't want it to wear out. Covered with plastic. So what's it? And he began to show us lace and beautiful things. A tablecloth. He said, you have a table? Yeah, you ought to get this. At first I thought he's trying to sell me. But then I realized something, that he was teaching me some things. He began to teach me about pretty things. And all kinds of different things. And me and Kathy began to develop a taste for that. We didn't realize how expensive it was and the work that it takes to do intricate lace and how they would iron the uh, tablecloths. And, and he was talking back. And, now, this man was 80 years old. I was, uh, what, Kathy, 20, 27, 28, something like that. I, mean, and it, it, I, I began collecting. See, I began to collect stuff. I met another man named Mr. Mannheim who was into antiques and things of that nature. And I thought, antiques? And I told him, I said, you know, one day I'm going to build a plantation home. He said, you need to start collecting now. He began to teach me things. You got to know what you're doing because you can get ripped off. You don't watch yourself. You know, sign pieces. He said, like in furniture, you want to get these four people. You want Francois Link, if you can. You want Dasson. You want Paul Samane. These people that sign their furniture, like Raphael and Michelangelo, when they would do a piece. This is a piece of furniture that you sign. It's called a sign piece. So I have in my home Francois Link, I got Paul Somani, I have uh, Zwina, I have uh, Dasson, which are all named people that made furniture for kings and things of that nature. I began to buy a piece at a time. See, because the Lord put this, he said, I'm going to show you this. Now, I was a reverend. I didn't have much. He said, start now, because when, he, he said, you're going to make more money on this stuff than you ever thought possible. I said, really? But first I thought, he, he's just trying to sell me. But what happened, God put those two men in my life, began to teach me about mice and porcelain, paintings, things like that. I mean, now, you got to, let, let me give you another little quick story. I'll, I'll go back to, me and Kathy wanted to buy a painting one time. We didn't know nothing about how much a painting cost. So we went to, down to Raw Street and we saw this painting. We went, oh my God, this is it. Kathy said, Jesse, this is it. Now, to me, 800 bucks for a picture is a lot of money. And I was willing to go that, and I thought, man, I said, take the painting off the wall. Kathy said, take it off the wall. I said, this is it. Yes, sir. I said, well, how much is it? He said, it's $42,000. Kathy said, put it back on the wall. 
<laughs> put it back on the wall. And then like two kids that don't know nothing said, do you have a print? <laughs> Which is nothing wrong with prints. We got a revelation that day that artwork is very expensive. And I remember saying, one day I'm going to have me some paintings like that. And then God put this Mr. Mannheim was great. He's now gone too. But, and Mr. Such teaching us all these things for a reason. And I got to thinking, I remember every time, I've never seen anybody ever have a couch for 20 years and sell it and make money. You see them throw it away. But not my stuff. Mine's going up right now, even as I am here. So I began to buy pieces. The Lord began to bless me. I had a choice to say yes or no. So I prayed. I said, Lord, are you putting these people in my life? He said, yes. He said, I'm going to show you beautiful things. And what's that scripture said? Your house is filled with beautiful and precious things. You probably have that on your refrigerator, one of them little magnets or something like that. I watch this so you can understand this. It was an act of love on God's part from a boy raised up in trailers. Kathy, too, raised up in trailers. Just, you know, all this kind of stuff. We were just, you know, but we, we love our family. I began to collect, never thinking. And actually, I forgot. I said, I guess I'm not going to build that house. I used to tell Jerry and Karen, they said, when are you going to build that house? I said, one of these days. I didn't realize how much stuff I was collecting. I collected paintings. I got mice and I got all kinds of stuff. I love chandeliers and every, all kinds of different things. Well, the God began to bless me in my books, book royalties. I began to make quite a bit of money on my book royalties. So I began to buy things, and God would direct me. Let me just give you an example. I remember when I paid $17,000 for a piece of furniture, watch me, about this big, this one, and by, by that tall, about this big, inlaid, a dory bronze on it, which means it's gold on top of the bronze. I loved it so much. I thought 17000 but I had some book royalties. Now, are you going to put it in the bank and make 1%, 2% with it? I said, and Mr. Man I said, buy that. He said, you're going to be surprised what that's going to do in 10 years. So I did first, you know, and all of us, and it's a signed piece, I got a phone call two years ago on that piece. This, watch this, from an antique dealer. So you know he's going to he, he, he cut it as cheap. He said, I'll give you $189,000 for it. Wow. Kathy said, sell it. I said, no. <laughs> no, because you see, Meredith, my granddaughter, she gets to be my age. Ain't no telling what they'll pay for that. Decisions, see, now I want you to listen to me. Let's stop there for a minute and read this. God was doing this out of love. I didn't know. I just thought it was pretty at first. But God had an agenda to take the wealth of the sinner and place it in my hand. Amen. And it was done by love. His love is always the dominant power in all activity and enterprise. Write that down. His love, his love is always the dominant power in all activity and enterprise. Well, I begin to collect and collect. And when we would come over, I'd come over with Brother Cope and we'd do an International Believers Convention in England or France or wherever we were or South Africa, I was looking. Uh, you know, if I, we had a day off or something and I love Sister Gloria. She said, go get Jesse. He likes to go. He likes to look at castles and pretty things. And I would be looking around and often if I saw something, you know, and I had several people I began to make enough money where I could send several people out looking for me for certain pieces, things of that nature. Now, who is really in, in, in this stuff beside me is Rick Renner. Rick Renner's got the same way. He has that same. So, because I, I love that kind. Now, some people don't like that kind of decor. That's fine. But so if you just want to throw away your couch, throw away your couch. <laughs> Kathy, in her study, has a couch and two chairs that was actually built in 1860. The, 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 the um, uh, fabric is made out of horse hair. This thing is worth a fortune. Do we sit on it? Yeah, we sit on it. Not long, but we sit on it. <laughs> we like those things. It's worth, oh Lord. Well, I'm going to tell you that toward the end. No, I wouldn't reveal that, but I'm going to just say this. See, it, and the Lord, I would pray, the Lord, am, should I do this? He said, do this. Do that. Do this. Now, you remember, he's got two Jewish men teaching me things. You see? And I begin to learn some things. And of course, I, 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 and then I began to buy paintings. Now, a $42,000 painting, that's a cheap painting today. I don't mean it pridefully, please. But I'm just saying, oh, Lord. So 
I walk into a place, I see two chandeliers. One's 1,100 pounds and one is 700 pounds. Belong to Louis the 16th, King Louis. One's a Louis the 16th, the other one is a Louis the 15th. I look at that, they told me the price on it. I said, nah. I said, but one day you're gonna need some money. And they just looked at me and smiled. So every time I'd go in the store, I would negotiate. We talk. And I'd say, Lord, he says, not now. Not now. Well, 2000 and, uh, was it 2008 when the recession hit? I walked in the store and the lady says, I'm ready to deal. <laughs> Watch this. I had, had another book that done very well. It was a number one thing. I received $400,000 in book royalties. Bow! Just, I thought, glory to God. I said, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give you 400000 Oh, Reverend. No, no, you, you, you know, just one is $400,000. This hung in castles. This is signed stuff. I said, I'll give you 400000 for both of them. I said, now you got to make a decision. Somebody going to take this money. <laughs> is it you? <laughs> she said, well, how are you going to pay this? Right now with a check. Cash. For both of them. Oh, they went back. Yeah, blah, blah. They said, that's about, that's about what we paid for it. Yeah. I mean, if you tell me no, I'm not mad. This is business. You do what you got to do. <laughs> See, life's about choices. She came back and says, done. I said, Kathy, write the check. I thank God we could do that because we had just got a bunch of book writing. I bragging. Watch that. Those two chandeliers, a year and a half ago, two Russians called me. Two Russians from Moscow. They said, Reverend Duplantis, we heard you got a Louis the 16th that hung in a castle and, such, and also a Louis the 15th. I said, yes, we would like to buy them. I said, they're not for sale. He said, the big one, the one that's nine foot long. And Happy Caldwell knows him because he sleeps in my house. He said, I, I said, yeah. He said, I'll give you a million dollars cash for it. And the other one, I'll give you $700,000 for it. Kathy goes, sell! <laughs> I said, no, I'm not, if I was hungry, I'd sell. But I ain't hungry. I said, one day, Meredith may sell it, and she may not. See, that's a lot. God was putting things in my hand by just listening. Now, some people say, that's greed. No, that's God who is Jewish. <laughs> Doing business for his kids to honor, to honor us. And they are hanging today. So why say 1.7 million? That's a lot of money for two of them. And I got more than that in there. Now watch this. See, I said, Lord, why are you doing this? He said, because I love you. I know you love it. Kathy said, I thought you, it was an investment. I said, it is. But we ain't hungry, Kathy. Now, if we go back to eating bologna and bread, we might sell a thing. And I can eat bologna and bread. Hey, I can go back and live in the trailer. I ain't got no problem with that. I'm just glad I got a roof over my head. That's not the issue. I don't think I ever will, but I'm just saying, hey, but you know what? It was God. See, life, he said, didn't I tell you in 2 Timothy 3, 17, profitable? God in the book of Isaiah said he teaches thee to, to profit. Things of that nature. Well, I have filled my home up, home up with all types of artwork. Now, this was done over about a 20, what, 28, 38, 40, about a, what, 27, 28 year period. When those two men died, they had taught me. Well, one of the daughters help me. They said, Reverend, we're going to France. We're going to, you're looking for anything particular? I said, no, but if you see something you think I'm going to like, let me know. The bed that we will sleep in, that we're going home Friday after, after our session, is, was Louis XVIII slept in that bed. Took me 10 years to find that, Dennis. I mean, it, 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 and people say, I can't get over. When people come in our house, they go, and it's filled with beautiful and precious things. Kathy decorated it. And it's French furniture and it's signed piece. And if, if you're in the antiques, you know what I'm talking about. Now, and the reason why I buy that, because you see one man said, well, I like modern. Well, just get it. And I promise you, as soon as you, they put it in your house, you done lost 50 to 80% of it. 
but it's still a good investment in a furniture because most people, you keep your furniture at least, you know, especially a bed 15, 20 years. So, you know, I paid a bunch of money for it. Yeah, but I, if you, you know, put it out over 20 years, that's a pretty good investment. But I want mine to grow because I serve a God that said that the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. See, life is about choices. I had to make that choice to do that. See, your future results always follow from present action. Write that down. Your future result follows from what you're doing today by present action. I didn't realize how much stuff we had collected. I have beautiful silver, sterling silver. I have a, a, a teapot that was made in 1700, and it's, oh, it's gorgeous. I'm not bragging, or please, don't think it like it. It's God bringing me to these things to bless us. For who? For me, for my child, and for my grandchild. And I told her to Jody, you want to sell it? <laughs> In fact, the other day, I said, Jody, you want this house? She said, Dad, I'll take that furniture all day long. I said, I guess you would. Nothing wrong with it. She should. Now, I told her this. I said, if you don't want any of this, I'll give you that because you have a choice. I will leave this to the ministry. I'll sell it and give it to the ministry. Mm -hmm. You know what she said? Most people say, no. She said, Dad, let me pray about that. See, because she's not a person that to me, trying to get something from me. She's always been like that because we taught her the work. In fact, she came up to me when she was 14, 15, no, 16 years old. She said, I am not working for the ministry. I said, good, you don't have to work. Did I ask you to work for the ministry? No, I am. I'm going into retail. I'm working at the mall. That's what she said. I said, Jolie, go to the mall. I said, you'll do real good. You got a phenomenal person out there. I think you'll sell clothes real good. She was there for a few months, you know, and they give you minimum wage and a little commission. And I, <laughs> about eight, six, eight months later, she comes back. She said, Daddy, I've been called to the ministry. <laughs> and I'll wash toilets if you want me to, because I know you're going to pay me more. I didn't force her. It was a choice. What choice have you not made? And you've wondered why you're in the hole that you're in. What opportunity came by you and you did not seize it? Mm. Because of fear? Oh, you know, is this really God? You're, you know God. Let's just face it. If your mothers went home to be with the Lord uh, 40 years ago and her voice would holler right now in this building, you go, that's my mama. You're going to know my sheep know my voice. And a stranger, they will not follow. So your future results always follows from present action. Write this down. God seeks to instruct the heart, not the head. God seeks to instruct the heart, not the head. If the heart is not rightly fixed, attention is misdirected. Your heart has to be rightly fixed or your attention will be misdirected in every area of your life, spiritually, physically, and financially. Everything decision you make, you should make a decision of the heart. That's not an emotional decision. That's a decision of the spirit through a renewed mind and a crucified body. Amen. Do you get that? It has to be a decision of the heart. And God will open doors that no man can shut and he's going to close doors that no man can open. And he'll lead you and guide you in things that you never thought you would ever be able to do. Amen. Simply because he's, he is moved by love to do it. Amen. That's all he wants to do is bless his kids. Like I preached last night. He has a hard time saying no. He wants to bless his children. Amen. But sometimes the children won't, don't want to be blessed because they've heard some man's commentary that they shouldn't be. And maybe somebody got greedy, but that doesn't mean you're going to be greedy. You, you understand what I'm saying? So when you understand that God seeks to instruct the heart, not the head, so we don't need a, a, a heart bypass, and need a head bypass. If the heart is not rightly fixed, attention is misdirected. Now what happens when misdirection comes? What happens to you when you're in misdirection? It produces instability. It produces feebleness and a falling away. The reason why people backslide because they got misdirected. And then the next thing is instability. The next thing is feebleness and the next thing is a falling away. Well, today, oh man, I don't want to say that, but the Lord told me that in the room, say it. Today, all that furnishings and stuff is worth about $30 million. <laughs> 
<laughs> that just makes me feel so <laughs> 28 years ago, I knew no way. Oh, that's not counting the house. Kathy said, you ain't going to sell it. I hope not. I hope my granddaughter lives in that because it's going to always be in style. Now, let me show you where I made a wrong choice. I did a book that just blew the socks off financially for us. It was our biggest book in terms of royalties that went all over the world. And a man called me and said, Reverend, I want you to come see this. So I went and I looked at it. And I, I had the Lord do this. I love this piece. It was a big China piece, China cabinet, but big. God, it was beautiful. It was made for the king of Egypt. It's in perfect condition. The man wants to sell it. He's in trouble. I said, he's in trouble. Yeah. He said, he needs money and he needs it today. I said, how much money he wants for it? He said, $1.2 million. $1.2 million. Guess what I had in royalties? $1.2 million. I thought, man. He said, this is not going to come by again for a long, long time. I said, I got to ask Kathy. Because I don't spend that kind of money when I'd ask my wife. We got to be in total agreement, George. I mean, that's a lot of money. So I said, Kathy, I just feel good about that. Just that's a lot of money. I said, she said, we've never spent that much money on any piece. Now, we've had some that's worth more than that, way more than that. But I mean, you know, we were just in the right place at the right time. She said, I'm, I don't feel right about it. I said, you don't feel. I said, but Kathy, feel right about it. Come on. Just, I, I said, I, 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 we got to do this. But I, I feel good about this thing. She said, I, 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 that's a lot of money. I don't think we should do it. Now, I'm not blaming her. But I said, OK. So I called the man back. I said, I said, I don't spend that kind of money without 100% agreement with my wife. And he said, well, we got to make this decision soon. He said, because I got several people, buy, but because you've been a good customer, and I want to buy it, but because you've been a good customer, he said, I'm not making a dime on this. He said, because I know you're going to come back to me. He said, are you sure? Yeah. I said, okay. He said, I know that's a lot of money. He said, but it's worth, he said, it's probably, he said, he said the Reverend, it's probably worth $3 million. I said, I don't doubt that. I said, but now I'm not going to. So I, I passed it. Seven years went by. Sotheby's, excuse me, Christie's in New York, the auction house. <laughs> I see that piece. Now you got people bidding on phones. You got some with the little paddles and all that kind of stuff. Guess how much it went for? Take a guess. He says five. Go up. How much? Seven? Go up. Go up. Twenty million dollars. I said, Kathy, Kathy, <laughs> Kathy. <laughs> Choice. Guys from Russia bought it. Russia buying a lot of stuff. Some multi-billionaire. 20 million. And I think about that. When I had that thing for 1.2, she looked at me in the face. She said, you wouldn't sell it. I said, no, I wouldn't sell it. But I'd hug it a lot. <laughs> Misdirection. Write this down. Obedience is not for a season. It ain't just once in a while, but it is constant and universal. It's constant and universal. Twenty million dollars. Good God. You wouldn't sell it. No, I wouldn't sell it. But it would be nice to know to invest in that amount of money and to get that kind of return. Now watch, in 20 years, what is that going to go for? Oh, that could never go any higher. Yeah, you living in a dream world? Man, they got paintings going for hundreds of millions of dollars now. That at one time, they thought $80 million was the highest price you'd ever pay for a painting. 
But today, since there's no shortage of money, it's just in the wrong hands. Reason why we haven't had it is because of misdirection. Because the church said that would have been greedy. You ain't no preacher to own something like that. There ain't no Christian to own something like that. You got to help the poor. I do help the poor. I'm doing that too. That's not the issue. It's God saying, I just want to love you. I just want to bless you. I just want to, I, I, that's all I want to do. And since when are you going to impress him? He's got gold streets. What are you going to do when you get to heaven? That ain't right. What you going to do? Tell God, this ain't right, Jesus. Got these gold streets and pearly gates. He's going to say, well, go on to hell. <laughs> you don't like this? It's gone. Man, are you crazy? He ain't, he ain't backing away and he ain't backing down. See, and he's not materialism. It's manifestation Amen. of his love towards you. Obedience is not for a season, but it is constant and universal. That's what Moses is saying. I've set before you life and death, blessing, curse. This is God says, excuse me, excuse me, choose life. I never, after I was saved, I never tried to get rich. But me and Creflo are in the same category. God, what do you want us to do? That's a blessing. Now, when you say things like that, boy, oh, people try to get close to you just to suck on you. Uh, that ain't. Now, I was born at night, but not last night. The day you make me a source or you make someone you think I got a few dollars a source, immediately God withdraws his hand. He cannot do it. He will not share that with anyone else but himself. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I did this without even trying. I'm not smart enough to do it. So God sent two men to teach me. And I learned pretty quick. And I don't forget. My God. Life's about choices. Now, I, I went on the financial side, but it's the other thing. How about the choices to become a real spiritual individual? It's going to take an investment in your life to get like that. It took Moses to, for Moses to be a lawgiver. Look what he had to invest in the God's way of thinking. Look what Abraham had to invest to become the father of faith. It was all investment. This, these were the spiritual decisions. And he said, then I will make of you a great nation. He told him to leave his family and didn't tell him where he was going. Leave your family, get out of it that place and start walking the desert and I'll tell you when you get there. That was a great investment spiritually in Abraham's thinking to do that. A man asked me the other day, well, how come you've never struggled? How come you never charge churches expenses? There's nothing wrong with giving somebody expenses. Don't misunderstand me. I, I'm not against that. I said, I'll tell you why. I said, because see, it, I can go anywhere I want to go because it's not determined about how much money they're going to give me. But I'm going to tell you something, because of the anointing of increase on me, <laughs> people get around me, get blessed. I ain't asking for nothing. Please, don't, don't think that just trying to kid you here to get yourself. No, no, it's just on me. I ain't my fault. And it, I, had a, I, mean, I had a guy on Channel 8 one time say, oh, you, you, just, you just rich. You know, he's mad. I said, well, it ain't my fault. <laughs> he didn't know how to handle it. What? I said, it ain't my fault. I said, Deuteronomy 8.18, Thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. It ain't my fault. What are you mad at me for? Talk to him. Oh, you can't talk to him. You dead. I make no excuse for the blessing of God in my life, whether it's spiritual, physical, or financial. Because, see, my life is made up of what I choose. I got saved by my choice. I could have rejected Jesus. Still can. Some people say, you can't. Yeah, you can. He don't make you a slave. But why would you want to? People say, why are you so happy? Because I struggle with sin. I have a hard time sinning. Only time I sin is when I get very angry and lose that temper. Then I say something I shouldn't have said. Sometimes I say something, Kathy goes, oh, Jesse. <laughs> Just rebukes me, man. And I've had the Lord say, that temper's coming up, put it down. I would like for him to do it. Just erase it. That's not his decision. That's my will. I got to make that decision. They say, no, I will not be angry. 
No. So, you know, the Bible says flee a pending evil. We have been forewarned about death. People sweating death. We have been forewarned about death. Flee a pending evil and hide in Christ. Just go hide in Christ. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Just hide there, glory to God. You ever seen that commercial? Uh, how much money you have in your retirement? Well, you may run out. You see them people walking around with that paper and they stretch it like this. You seen that? You're going to need more in this and that, all that kind of stuff. You, you as a total believer don't really have to worry about that. That doesn't mean you don't do things to help yourself in later life. But what I'm saying is, my God, God's on your side. Why is God in this? And you know why I don't charge? Let me go back to that statement. I said, uh, why I didn't charge someone? Because I, it's, I call it the David principle. I adopted it personally in my life. David says, I want a piece of ground. I want to build something for God. Look what the guy says. Now, every preacher is looking for this kind of guy. He said, man, I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give you the property. That's got to be God. Ain't nobody just giving away property. Right? True. And it's, David says, no. I love this statement. I will not offer God something that doesn't cost me something. I had a wonderful compliment by the ICFM uh, convention. I, they asked me to preach at a convention in Australia. They said, Brother Jesse, you have the easiest speaker, international speaker we've ever had. I didn't charge him a dime. I didn't tell him what it was costing. It cost a lot of money to fly a jet to Australia and back. I mean, you're talking about, nobody say a word. Because I say this, if this meeting doesn't cost me something, then it's not valuable to me. And they blessed me. Don't misunderstand me. It was just a blessing. Of God. So I go wherever God tells me to go. It's so wonderful to be, have that freedom to do that. But that's done by a choice. So consequently, what has happened through the years is that I haven't had financial deficits. So when Satan tries to hit me like on this gear and I had to pay double, so God's going to double me. I promise you come July the 31st, when I, look, when I close out the month of July at Jesse Penn Ministry, I'm going to be over and above. You see what I'm saying? I'm not bragging on that. It's about a choice. I choose to believe that. Or even a stronger way of saying, I choose to know that. So when I know that, I understand what God is saying here. So I said, Lord, what will thou have me to do? God, and, and let me say this in close here. Uh, when God put me with Kenneth Copeland, the Lord spoke something to me. He said, watch him. This is years ago. Watch him? Whoa, what? Just watch him. <laughs> Adopt some of his principles. What principles? Didn't know Brother Copeland. But I begin to notice things. I'm a man that I can be talking to 15 people and noticing everything around me. I mean that pridefully. I can have eight tracks running in my mind, sometimes to a point that it causes me trouble. I got so many things going, you know what I'm saying? And Satan sometimes will use that to make you, to give you bad health. Because you're just running not into nothing, not even thinking, you know what I mean? That kind of stuff. It, 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 you know, like one time the Lord said, I asked God, I said, Lord, I, I, I've lost all my strength. I need you to touch me. What should I do? He said, sleep. I thought, sleep? I said, I could have thought of that. He said, why didn't you? All I had to do was go to sleep. You lay yourself down and go to sleep. I slept 12 hours that day. I ain't never slept 12 hours since. I woke up feeling like a new man. All my body needed was rest. But Satan was pushing me. And you know how I found out? A word of knowledge from a 15-year-old boy who was enamored by me. Oh, but just, he, he said, I believe I got a word from the Lord. I said, well, tell me. Oh, he just sweat. I said, tell me, young man. And I love what he said. He, went like, he, he did a King James on me. Thus saith the Lord thy God. <laughs> Praise God. This is going to be a good one. This is a King James one. Glory to God. Thus saith the Lord thy God. Satan cannot defeat you. He gets in front of you. You run him over, saith the Lord. You beat his brains out. You run him down. I'm going, boy, come on, boy. This is good. So he didn't get in front of you. He started getting behind you and pushing you, saith the Lord. Pushing you, saying, why do you want to sleep? Why do you want to rest? Come on, there people down and going to hell. Go down. You don't need to sleep. Forget about that. Just keep going. I went, because if that was Jesse Duplantis, that's Jesse Duplantis. And then he's trembling. Uh, uh, was that right? I wanted to say, no, you missed it, you little fool. <laughs> no, you missed it. No. Yes, he was right. I saw Creflo Dollar last night. He come in. He said, hey, man, I ain't got a chance to talk to you. How you doing, man? You're looking good. He said, when are you going to slow down? I said, what? you going to tell me that? 
Why don't you want to slow down? And that's true. Because see, your spirit can take much more than this body can. No, I'm not in sickness. Don't misunderstand. But I mean, you can push yourself to that point. And I close with this statement. When God tells you to do something, he's the author and finisher of your faith, right? Now, this is for the preachers. But he's under no responsibility to finish something he has not authored. Write that down. You better know God told you to do something because he's under, no, I'm not saying he won't do it, but he's under no responsibility to do it. But whatever he authors, he does. He finishes what he authored, but he's under no responsibility to finish something he has not authored. I've seen some guys build some beautiful churches and it has become a burden and a chain around their neck. Because God didn't want them to do that. They just wanted to be the biggest boy on the block and have the biggest building. And, and nothing wrong with having a big, I'm not knocking that. But what did God say? I know what the bank says. Because they ain't going to have mercy on you. How many churches today that the banks are controlling their finances? That's God's money. Why don't you help me? Lord? Not saying he won't help you. That's not the issue. But he's under no responsibility to do so. And remember the clouds. I might preach on that tomorrow if the Lord let me. Remember the clouds. Don't forget the clouds. A great cloud of witnesses. The one thing they say about us, about me and Brother Copeland, and Jerry, and, and, and Creflo, and Bill Winston, and Keith Moore, and Gloria, is how do these people just come together? And they just seem happy all the time. Well, we love each other. We don't get together a lot because all of us are busy ministering the word of God somewhere. All have different forms and ways of doing things, which is good. We learn from each other. Didn't you enjoy that last night when Brother Copeland was talking to me? Yeah. You, you witnessed an intimate session right there. And I was about ready to cut it off so I could preach. And the Lord said, no, no, let this flow. And he was flowing. And that's what we do when we get together. We just have just great sessions you think we didn't, there ain't no more left to talk about in the Word of God, and in two seconds, you know, and we start. We start to go out to eat. Then remember that place we used to do dinners with, right there in, uh, 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 there in Colorado, but we were all on that, on that balcony out there. We all have a, one room, and then we'd get out there, and we're trying to get to dinner, and we, and we sit down too long at that table. That's it, son. We ain't going <laughs> to, you know, just, just, and we're so free with each other. What do you mean? We're going together. Like one time we came in, boy, we just finished the believers community. We all tired. We had our motorcycle. Now me, I'm going to speak my mind. You will not misunderstand Jesse the Planets. I'm going to tell you, if you say you like my dress, I'm going to say no. I'm not trying to be rude. I ain't going to lie to you. Well, what do you don't like about it? I don't know. I just don't like it. So anyway, we were all pretty tired. We'd been preaching like that. And so we all come out like that. And man, I mean, and Dennis and Vicky were there, and me and Kathy, and, and uh, uh, Happy and Jeannie, and uh, uh, Jerry and Carolyn, and of course, our brother and sister Copeland. And uh, it, it was truly a blessing. Now, Gloria knows I'm going to speak my mind. Gloria's so sweet. So she goes, Jess. Hey, Jess. I said, yeah, what, what do you want to do? I said, well, y'all can do whatever y'all want to do. I'm going to bed. I'm going in that room right there. And I'm going to sleep. And we will eat tomorrow. I ain't going to win for that. I am more slap out. I'm going to, she says, all of a sudden everybody says, us two, man, we just tug. Now everybody would have jumped on their motorcycle and take off. You know, they want to do it. Not, not Jesse. I don't mean that privately. I just, I'm going to bed. And they all wanted to go to bed, but nobody wanted to be a killjoy. You know what I'm saying? You should have seen, we all went, let's go to bed. Glory to God. <laughs> everybody wanted to rest. Now the next day we were ready, buddy. Well, you heard, heard, no, we shook up that hotel. And I had one that went, it was real quiet, see. <laughs> and then and when we drove out, we drove out. This fly just loves me. <laughs> he comes around, he's going to get killed in a few seconds. Yeah. <laughs> so it, I just speak. And how many times? When I go to God, I say, God, this is it. This is what I can do. 
unless you see something in me that I can do better. I'm on, I, as far as I know, God, this is, a, this is it. He said, I appreciate your honesty. He said, that'll be fine. I said, well, was it enough? He said, it was more than enough. I said, well, thank you. He said, you're welcome. He said, remember this. I got you back. That blessed me. I said, I said, God, and I got your front. I got your back. I got your sides. I will not make an excuse for your blessing on my life. I'll take the persecution in the heat of the world. I won't be guided by the world's frown or the world's smile. I'm going to be guided by your voice. I'm going to honor what you say. Now watch that when you say that, because you're going to have an opportunity not to honor it. Life's about choices. You chose to come to this Believers Convention. What a blessing. You made the right choice. Not because of us. It's because of the Lord Jesus Christ. I promise you, you'll go home after this. Next week, you will remember something I said that you didn't pick up while I said it. Or you'll remember something, Brother Copeland or Brother Dollar or Brother Keith, or, you know, all of us, or Brother Jerry or whatever. You'll go, wait a minute, Jerry Savelle said, that's right. It'll just come, it'll come back to you. And it's truly amazing. Great to have the CDs and all that kind of stuff. But I'm just, it'll just come back to you. Because sometimes you're in the midst of a situation, you can't go look at your Bible and look at your notes. It's, something's got to come up. You've got to make a decision, make a choice. So a decision makes a choice. A discussion makes a debate. I'm not going to debate the issue. So, man, uh, this is my last closing. <laughs> it's hard, yeah. But then nobody followed me. Man stopped me. I was out. Uh, my brother-in-law saw me. I, I live by the Mississippi River. Uh, the levee right in front of my Beautiful, I tell you. I decided to go up the levee. Uh, Happy. Happy told me one thing. He said, unlock that gate. I got, I got wrought iron gates around my home. I won't walk up that levee. I won't go. So I walked up there and I came back. And the man said, you own that house, don't you? I said, yes, I do. It's 40,000 square foot. I'm the bragging. You don't need to applaud. I said, that's what the Lord said. That's what I do. I made no good decision about that. He said, why do you have to have a house that big? I said, why do you wear them kind of shorts? <laughs> he said, what'd you say? He's he a runner. He's a jogger, you know, on top of the levee. I said, why do you wear them kind of shorts? He said, you don't like my shorts? I said, you don't like my house? I said, no, no, you love my house. You don't like your house. That's why you're talking about it. Yeah, but why you got to have it that big? I said, why you got to have that, those shorts? Why you got to have that? He said, because I like them. I said, because I like it. Then I said this, I'll never get in your shorts and you ain't going to never get in my house. <laughs> I walked down the levee. I felt pretty good about it. The Lord said, just that good. <laughs> Why do you have the house you have? Why do you drive the car you drive? I don't have a problem with that. Because that's what you think you need, right? They don't, we, I don't know what this man needs. I don't know what this lady needs. I have no cons. I don't know when she, you know, I have no idea. Why'd you wear that, uh, that blouse? That, would you kill a zebra or something like that? You know? <laughs> that's a beautiful blouse. It's beautiful. I like it. <laughs> I like it. I really do. You know, because you like it, right? You enjoy it. You saw it that impressed you. And you know what? The Lord said, well, she can have it. Now, what's wrong with that? Why do black women want straight hair? Why do white women want curly hair? It don't make no difference. If that's what you want, that's fine. Why should anybody criticize that? I don't think she ought to wear that dress. Well, you ain't wearing it. She wanted to wear it. One lady tried to cut my little girl when Jody was just a child, man, seven years old. I think Jody's dress is just too short. I said, your pants are so tight I can strike a match on you. Well, you don't mess with my kid. Kathy just grabbed my coat. Whoa, bo, 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 suck, bo, bo. I said, you don't mess with my daughter. That's my, that's my blood, man. That's all I got. 
We bought her the dress. She looked wonderful. What kind of mind you got to start with? This is a seven-year-old child. I really believe God has told a lot of people, don't mess with Jess. That's my boy. You leave that boy alone. See, God made a choice. He said, I got your back. I got your back. One more and I'll shut up. I was in a church in Chicago. Pastor asked me if I would receive an offering for his church. I knew it was right, happy, because the Lord wanted me to give. You know that time when I bought, uh, gave you that money for that fence? Remember that? At, at Agape. Now, when me and Kathy make financial decisions, we talk. We talk before. What, 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 what is the Lord telling you about giving today? Or what about, you know? But we didn't. She didn't know. And I said, bless God, man. We had a great service. <laughs> so I said, we're going to receive this offering here. And I see Kathy going... And she's being nice. She's on the front row. And, you know, people look at you, you know, they're watching you, you know. She goes, now, when well, you've been married long enough, you can kind of read each other's mind. And what she's asking me, how much you want, how much you want to write this check for? I looked at Kathy. I said, make a decision, woman, and I'll back it. She goes, okay. Put it in there, right? Pass the offering. That's it. That night, they're taking us to the hotel. I'm sitting in the back seat with Kathy. Comes to my mind. How much you give? I don't know. So I want to ask, but I don't want to ask in front of the driver. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of a little embarrassing. So I go, <clears throat> <clears throat> <laughs> Kathy goes, I said, I'm gonna. she goes, what? <laughs> Read my mind, woman. Finally, I just said, how much did you give? She went, 25. I said, you gave $25? I can't believe. Did you give 25? She said, no. I gave 25,000. I went, Jesus. I went, it shook me. Boom. The man said, something wrong, Bridget? No, 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 you're not wrong. And she leaned over to me. She said, and you said you'd back it. I learned. I talked to Kathy now before I. <laughs> One time she did the same thing on me. I told her, I told her something to give, and she misunderstood me. So she wrote a check for $50,000 and gave it to the guy. I said, How much? She said, That's what you said. I said, I didn't say that. Or oh, I made a mistake. <laughs> Like it's nothing. But you said you would back it. That brother kept saying, I want to thank you. I said to myself, you lucky dog. You just don't know how lucky you are right there. Lord. But you know what? That's what that person needed. I didn't know that. So who was actually listening? Stand to your feet. Did you enjoy it this morning?